In this video, we're going to talk about how to evaluate the limit of a composite function from a graph. So let's start with this expression. We want to find the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of g of x. So this expression is equivalent to what I'm about to write here. So we have f, and then we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative 3 of the function g of x. So g of x is the graph on the right side. And here is an x value of negative 3. If we approach from the left side, notice that g will gain a y value of negative 2. And the same is true if we approach from the right side. So from either side, it's going to be negative 2. So this is going to equal the limit as g of x approaches negative 2 for the expression f of g of x. So as x approaches negative 3, g approaches negative 2. Now, this part you need to be careful with. Here's a question for you. Does g of x, does it approach negative 2 from the left side or from the right side? Think about that. That's very important. So as x approaches negative 3 from the left side, we know g approaches negative 2. Now g is on the y-axis. So the g function, it's approaching this y value of negative 2 from above this point. And as we approach negative 3 from the right side, g is approaching negative 2 from above negative 2 as well. As g approaches negative 2 from above in this graph, it's equivalent to f approaching negative 2 from the right side. So you need to translate the word above in the g function with the word from the right in the function for f. Because the y value for this function will become the x value for this function because g is inside of f. You may want to take a minute to make sure you internalize that. And you could visualize it as well with a number line, which I'm going to put here. So here is negative 2, and we're focused on the y values. As we approach from this side, the y values, they're decreasing. Here the y value is 0, it's negative 1, negative 1.5, negative 1.9, negative 2. So it's greater than negative 2. From here, if we go from this side, it's 0, negative 1, negative 1.5, negative 1.9, negative 2. So this side is negative 2.1, which is less than negative 2. Over here, this is negative 1.9, which is greater than negative 2. So as we go towards negative 2, we need to hit negative 1.9 before we get to negative 2. We're not going to get to negative 2.1, which means we're coming from this side, from negative 1.9 to negative 2. So as we approach negative 2 from above, in the case of g, that equates to approaching negative 2 from the right along the x-axis in the graph of f. And that's the concept I want you to understand here. So feel free to rewind the video if you need to to make sure you grasp that concept. Because that's important when dealing with the limit of composite functions. So now that we know we are approaching that g is approaching negative 2 from the right. Now that we move on to the graph of f, we need to look at the x value of negative 2, and we need to approach it from the right. Fortunately, if we approach it from the left or the right, we're going to get the same y value for f, which is positive 3. So that's going to be the answer to this problem. The end result is a value of 3. Now, let's move on to the next example. 
So let's try this one. Let's find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of g of x. So feel free to work on that example problem. So here is negative 1 on g. But first, let's write it this way. So this is equivalent to f. And then we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x. Now let's make sure that the limit exists. As we approach negative 1 from the left side, the y value is 4. And as we approach negative 1 from the right side, we still get a y value of 4. So as x approaches negative 1, g approaches 4. So I'm going to write the limit as g of x approaches 4 of the function f of g of x. g is still inside of f. Now, as we approach 4, or as we approach an x value of negative 1, and as the y value approaches 4, is g going to 4 from the left or 4 from, from the right? What would you say? In the last problem, we were approaching negative 2 from above. So as we're looking at the y values, not the x values. Here, we're approaching the y value of 4 from below. So when you approach a y value from above, it's going to be associated with a positive sign or from the right. When you approach a y value from below, it's going to be associated with the negative sign or from the left. And that's what we have here. So because we're approaching a y value of 4 from below, when we move on to the next graph, g is going to approach 4 from the left side. And let's use a number line to verify this. So let's put 4, because that's the y value we're approaching. To the right, a positive 4 will be 4.1. To the left will be 3.9. So notice that we're going up. So here, the y value is 2, 2.53, 3.5, 3 3.94. So we're coming from the left. We're not going above 4 to 4.1. We're starting from 3 to 3.5 to 3.9 to 4. So that's why we could put the negative sign here, because we're approaching 4 from the left side or from below it. So g of x will be the input of f. So this is going to be the x value for the f function. So here, we're approaching 4, not from the right, but from the left. So as we approach an x value of 4 from the left, the y value is going to be 2. If we were to approach positive 4 from the right side, the y value will be 1. So in this case, in order to get this question right, we need to choose the appropriate sign here. We need to know if we're going from we're going to 4 from the right or 4 to the left, because that will affect the final answer in this example. Go ahead and try this problem. Find the limit as x approaches 2 of f of g of x. So feel free to pause the video if you want to work on this example problem. By the way, for those of you who want more practice problems on limits in general, maybe have a test to study for, Check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more content on limits so that you can pass your next exam. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. So first, we're going to rewrite this expression as f of the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. So here is an x value of 2. Now for this one, you need to be careful. Because 
it's a little different than the previous problems. And here's why. If we focus on the y values, here we're approaching a y value of negative 2 from above, and here we're approaching a y value of negative 2 from above. So it's the same for that. Now for the 4, for the second problem, we approach a y value of 4 from above. And on the right side, we approach a y value of 4 from above as well. So that's the same. But for this one, it's different because as we approach the x value of 2, the y value that corresponds to g is 1. But notice that we're approaching the y value of 1 from above on one side. But from the other side, we're approaching a y value of 1 from below. So because those directions are different in terms of the y value, not the x, what's going to happen is it's going to give us two different values for g once we're trying to get f from g. So we're going to have to break this problem into two parts. We need to determine the left side limit and the right side limit because they will give us different values of g. So let's find f of the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x. So here is the x value of 2. It's right here. And we're going to approach it from the right side. So as we approach 2 from the right side, we get a y value of 1. But notice we are approaching the y value of 1 from below. It's from the right, but it's from below. So we're approaching along the x-axis from the right, but we're going, we're approaching a y value of 1 from below. So what's going to happen is we're going to get the limit as g approaches positive 1. Now, because we're approaching the y value from below, this is going to be from the left side when we translate it to the next graph. Because as the y values increase towards 1, we need to go from 0 to 0.5 to 1. So we're going from the left side of 1. So that's how we have the negative sign and not the positive sign. And this is going to be of f of g of x. So now that we have that, let's take this value and move it along the x-axis of the function for f. So 1 is basically this vertical asymptote here. As we approach 1 from the left, we're following this part of the curve. Notice that it's going up to positive infinity. Now, let's check the other side. So let's find f of the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x. So as we approach the x value of 2 for the function of g, and we're doing it from the left side, we're going to get the limit as g of x. It's still approaching a positive value of 1. But notice that we're coming from above. So as we approach the y value of 1 from above, when we translate it to f of x, it's going to be the same as approaching this from the right side, because we're going to 1 from higher values. So here, the y value is 2, and it's 1.5, 1.1, and then 1. So we're going, if on a number line, from the right of 1. So let's put a plus there. I was trying to get rid of this arrow, but I guess it's just going to have to stay now. But now, 
as we plug in this into f, as g of x approaches 1, so we have f of 1, the comments on the right. So as we follow this to an x value of 1, the curve is going towards negative infinity. Now, because the right side of the limit and the left side of the limit are different, the original limit does not exist because they're different. So that's it for the problem. Now let's work on one more example. What is the limit as x approaches 3 from the left side of f of g of x? Feel free to try that. So here is an x value of 3, and we're approaching it from the left side, and that will give us a y value of negative 1. So this is f of the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of g of x. And as we approach 3 from the left, g goes to negative 1. So I'm just going to continue this here. So we have the limit as g goes to negative 1 of f of g of x. Now, is g approach negative 1 from the left side or from the right side? So looking at the y values, the curve is approaching negative 1 from above. So that means that we're approaching negative 1 from the right side along a number line. So now we move on to the graph of f. As g approaches negative 1 from the right, or in other words, as x approaches negative 1 from the right, notice that we Now we have two curves at negative 1. We have this one and this one. This one is on the left side. This one is on the right side. So we got to start from this curve. And we go towards negative 1, which will give us a y value of 4. So that's going to be the answer for this problem. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction in terms of how to evaluate limits of composite functions. So they could be tricky, but one thing I recommend is to pay attention to this part. Once you get the value for g, like where it's going, make sure you determine if it's approaching that value from the left side or from the right side. If it approaches negative 1 from below or from above. Because if you're not careful with that part, you could make some mistakes. And that can cost you in getting the right answer. So be careful with that part.